This is the Noctua RTX 4080, possibly one of the best and nicest 4080s ever built. But, there's a big but. Is it actually worth it and what are you paying for? We did look at the thermals and the actual uh, cooling capacity of this car earlier, but what we didn't do is look at the benchmarks and uh, I found something very interesting, which uh, makes me scratch my head and think, what's going on? Because you only get to see the full picture when you start to compare one product to some of the other products on the market, and then you'll see the truth, like you see this sponsored segment. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. So the three cards we're comparing is this Noctua over here, obviously. Then this Zotac RTX 4080 Amp Extreme Aero and then we have the TUF RTX 4080 OC model here. So looking at some of the specs, everything is pretty much identical on the paper apart from the cooler and some of the clock speeds. If we look at the TUF OC, uh, they are advertising at clock speeds up to 26-25 megahertz. The Amp Extreme Aero is 25-65, so a bit lower there, as you can see 60 megahertz lower. And then the Noctua is exactly the same as TUF OC, so basically the Noctua is the TUF OC just with a different cooler, what I can tell. In terms of TDP, that's interesting though, when doing the Fermark and just synthetically maximizing the graphics power, we can see 306 watts pulled from the TUF, but I did have earlier version of the driver there that was right in the launch of this um, card, the 4080, compared to the Nocto, which is 318 watts, so about 12 watts more, and then the Amp Extreme Aero, which is 321 watts. But interestingly, if you look at the clock speeds of the Amp Extreme Aero after like 20, 30 minutes, something like that, the Amp Extreme Aero is the car that actually pushes the highest clock speeds when 100% utilized, which is just interesting. In terms of the price, the TUF OC right now I can see is around $1,290. The Amp Extreme Aero from Zotac is the cheapest, about 5% cheaper pricing at $1,225. But then the Noctua is $1,649, which is the price of a 4090. What? what? Yes, let's, let's talk about that in a moment, but let's find out if this price tag is worth what we're paying for in terms of performance. If you want to check out my test bench setup, I'm going to leave it in the description below. First of all, Geekbench 5. The Zotac card is interestingly about 10% slower in the CUDA scores compared to the TUF, about 10% faster in the OpenCL and about 10% slower in the Vulcan card. In terms of Noctua, the Noctua is actually 12% slower in the CUDA scores, 10% faster in the open CL and about 7.7% slower in the Vulcan. Now take Geekbench with a grain of salt because Geekbench isn't actually an application that gives you performance, it's just a synthetic benchmark that does all sorts of different things that GPU does. But now in Photoshop video editing, the Zotac is about 1.2% slower and Nocto about 5% slower. And interestingly the Nocto card did perform like absolutely slowest, almost as fast as the RTX 3050 in terms of overall score. But no one will buy this 4080 for Photoshop, so none of these cards really make sense for this Photoshop application. In Lightroom Classic, story is very similar, so let's move on to video editing. Premiere Pro, the Zotac is 10% faster than the tough here, and in the extended and live playback scores, about 22 to 25% faster. Looking at the Noctua, Noctua is about the same, uh, 9 to 10% faster in the extended overall scores, and 29 and 23% faster in the live playback scores. But I do think this is due to the driver because the 4080 TUF had one of the earliest drivers that was launched and perhaps not even a public driver. So I'd say there's the issue over there because all the other 4080s that I've tested kind of all benchmark in the same ballpark, but that TUF with the earlier version of the driver a bit different. That means it's very important to update your drivers. So whenever you got your 40 uh, series graphics card, just have a look if there's a new studio driver and then update the driver because you might get even more performance out from your GPU. In After Effects, 
The Zota card is about 4% faster than the overall scores and the same in the GPU scores. And Noctua is about 3.6% faster in the overall scores and about 3.8% faster in the GPU scores. So again here, I'd say they perform pretty much identical. Moving on to the Vrinci Resolve, which actually utilizes the GPU. And here we can see that, oh, they perform pretty much exactly the same. Okay, 4K media score is about 4% faster in the Noctua and about 5% faster in the Zotac. But thinking about the earlier version of the driver and this benchmark, there is no difference, especially between the Noctua and the Tuff. Let's try some of the 3D. For example, V-Ray and Architecture, we can see that the Zotac is about 3% faster in the CUDA scores and 1.5% faster in the RTX scores. The Noctua is about 2% faster in the CUDA scores and about 0.1% slower in the RTX scores. So no difference here either. In Blender, perhaps that is the difference here. A Zota card is about 1.5 to 4.8% faster, depending on the classroom juncture or monster scene. So performing very, very similar. The Noctua card does get a very high score in the monster scene, as you can see over 5,000 points. But, and the highest was stretching the lead is about 6.2% compared to the Tuff. But between the Zotac and Noctua, we're within the margin of error and the same with classroom scene there. So not a real difference here either. Perhaps Octane Bench tells us a different story. The Zotac card is about 6.5% faster than the Tuff and Noctua is about 6% faster than the Tuff, but within 0.5% of Zotac. So again here, not real difference. So the conclusion in terms of performance is then that this card really isn't much different in terms of performance or graphics power than the competition cards here. Well, perhaps then the cooling is the one that sets it apart and the quietness. So looking at the power draw here, the Tuff pulls 306 watts, which is a little bit conservative and perhaps now with the later BIOS you can get it to pull a little bit more, but with the lower power draw it actually results the lowest of the scores here. And low is good by the way. As you can see over ambient with 38.8 degrees and the Noctua card is 0.7 degrees warmer at 39.5 degrees. In terms of the hotspot, hotspot is 0.4% different and the Noctua card is, although, pulling about 12 watts more. So if we did add that 12 watts extra to the Tuff, then the Noctua cooling would be better, but we're talking about one degree better perhaps. Now compared to the Zotac here, we can see that the that the difference is a bit bigger, although the Zotac card does pull extra few watts there, but the card is about five to six degrees warmer compared to the Noctua card, and the hotspot is about nine degrees warmer, which just shows that uh, it's really pushing the card to the maximum. The die gets a bit warmer, the higher clock speeds, it is a hotter card, the Zotac one, but nothing unmanageable and nothing to worry about. So let's conclude our dilemma here. Number one, is the Noctua cooler actually cooler than the competition cards? And the answer is not really. Now on 30 series cards, it did make sense, but on 40 series card, it doesn't make that much sense because the 40 series coolers are already massive. In fact, most of the 40, 80 coolers are actually 4090 coolers and I have already fooled you because this here is not a 4080 this is a 4090 but it's exactly the same cooler that's why I can put it in here. So we're not really gaining anything massive in terms of cooling with these 220 millimeter fans. Number two is it quieter and the answer here is Yes, no matter which way you would compare these cards, the Noctua cards will be quieter and perhaps it has more cooling power to push through when you, you know, ramp the fans up. But the thing is, when do you actually need it to be that quiet? I'd argue that most of your other system will make so much more noise even over your other loud GPUs like the Zotac or the Tuff here, so you wouldn't really hear it 
and the GPU is not the loudest component in your system anyway. Now it's a cool thing to say, yes, this is the one of the quietest cards that you can get. Maybe some of the liquid cooled cards are you know quieter but there's no liquid cooled 4080s as far as i know so even though the noctua gets a point for the quietness it's not really a point to be bragging about number three is it performing better than the other cards the answer again is not really it performs the same number four the actual idea or advancement of the 40 series compared to the 30 series the card is exactly the same the size is the same, the design is exactly the same. The only difference is this little bit of the back, the hole on the 40 series is slightly bigger. That's about it. There is no big innovation going on. It's a bit of a copy based design what's gone on here. Yes, you might have had to, you know, kind of configure it to this PCB. It's really the same. Number five, I think this is wasted here on the 4080. I think this could have been a 4090 card, make it a bit bigger, by all means, add another 120 millimeter fan and then call it an Asus and Noctua 4090. And now we're talking about something different. And I do think the 4080 isn't that hot anyway, like we're so, so far from the thermal limits of this card that we could have added a 4090 here. That could have made a bit more sense. And then the price difference between the 4090 tough or partner cards and the Nocto cards would have been a little bit more digestible. So then what is this card? In all of the likeness and as much as I like Asus and Noctua, to her. I seriously do and I was so excited to see it and hear it and test it and another amazing amazing you know collaboration with these the price is so ridiculous that it doesn't make sense to me this is just really a very expensive merch for Noctua it's not actually giving you any benefit of considering any of the you know partner cards any of the other cards you're just getting the design and you're paying for the design you're not getting a smaller card yeah maybe it's a bit shorter card but that's not the issue here it still blocks all your other pca expansion slots it's not really a card that you can put two in your system it's just a big merch i guess it just lacks a bit of innovation for the 40 series i'd love to know what you think in the comment section below if you do want to check out these cards i'm gonna leave them in the description below and one last thing unless you're noctua fanboy and you love the brown color i don't think you will be buying this card because for the same price you can get a 4090 which is so much better than the 4080 in a lot of the ways especially if you're a creator it kind of doesn't make sense i'm happy to see it but it doesn't make sense i like the card but it doesn't make sense i'd love to have the card but it doesn't make sense i hope it makes sense but if you do want to save some money building a pc and you're wondering which pc to build then check out the build guides in the description below there's a four part best bang for buck creator pc build series so you just pick the one that's closest to your budget and i'll explain everything in the video there's upgrades downgrades everything explained there and at this point already the prices have fallen what i've checked recently so you might be getting those pcs even cheaper so worth checking out. Check it out down there. Bye-bye.